Hello, welcome to my studio. This is Roland Lee, and uh, I'm going to do another painting today. This one is of the national parks, which is what I do a lot, but it's up in Arches National Park. And it is famous for, of course, the arches that are through there. But it's all full of other kinds of pinnacles and what we call hoodoos that are shaped like animals and people. And, and uh, we give these imaginary uh, names to them. Uh, the painting that we're doing today involves a formation called the Three Gossips. And right next to it is another one called Sheep Rock. Well, they're important to this scene, but I'm trying to add a little more drama to it by creating this really luminous sky that would happen in, towards the end of the day and uh, allowing the light to kind of flicker through across the foreground and create some interest there. But what I really want to create is drama. Okay, now you think, well, go to, to the national parks like Arches or, or Zion or, or Canyonland, some of these others. There's plenty of drama there. Well, that's true. But I always try to infuse some of the photographs that I bring back to the studio with just a little more of what I think they should have to really create a good painting. So that's what I'm going to do today. So join me and let's get started. So what I'm doing here is I've got a little thumbnail study that I'm working out here. Uh, the values are what's important when I work uh, in this little value study. We're trying to establish these lights and darks. That's what's important and gives power to our painting. So once I've got that, then I can transfer that image over onto my watercolor paper. I'm using white artist tape to tape 140 pound arches cold press paper down onto incredible artboard. And that gives me the surface I'm going to paint on. So all I need to do now is just transfer the outlines over to my paper. Well, let's continue on again, darkening these up just slightly. These shapes uh, don't have to be exactly perfect, but we'd better get close. So I'm going to put my pencil down. We'll leave our reference material here, and then I'll go over here to my palette and I'll start mixing some of these pigments out here into these wells. And when I'm painting, I'll draw from these wells rather than the paint wells. I'll draw from the mixing wells using a variety of brushes. I'm going to grab some uh, more of a magenta. This, in fact, is quinacridone magenta and quinacridone coral. These are my cooler, cooler reds. And mixed with blues, that gives us a good strong purple. So I'm going to grab some blue now. This is ultramarine blue and put some of that out in this area. And I've got some paints ready to go now. Now I'm going to work in the sky area and I'm going to turn my board a little bit since all the sky area is on this side. I'm going to turn this around this way and I'm going to bring some water across this whole sky area. It isn't entirely necessary to, to um, isolate the water to this area, but if it starts to puddle and it's getting ready to break out of that, I'll lay it down a little bit and you can see from the shine um, in the, the, the painting uh, right along this edge. See that water, how it's just beating up against there? Well, great. Now we tip it back this way and let it run back. And we're going to give it time to settle into the fiber of the paper. Since this is 100% rag paper, we want it to be nice and nice and wet, not on the surface, but on the inside, down deep in the fibers of it. But let's just let this roll around a little bit and tip it and let it roll then I'll set it back down again and then I'll grab a little bit of yellow and I'm going to be very bold in my sky today because it is an evening sky or the end of the day and I'm going to put a bunch of color in here and let it run down into these edges and a little more red over here saying oh no he's gone crazy with this color. Well, not so much. Uh, not so bad. And once again, I'll let that run around. You can see it running down in here. I'll let it just tip and move. I'll bring some yellow up in this area. 
making kind of an orange. This will be quite dark up against this edge. So I'll bring it up against there. And whatever goes behind a shape needs to come out again. So I'll bring some of this same red over there. And I'm going to preserve some lights up in this area. But now I'm going to be very bold with my blue. And I've still got my board tipped up slightly, as you can see. And so that, that the paint will move as I want it to move. So now I'm going to bring some blue in here and watch what happens. I'm not going to mix it on the palette. I'm going to let it mix out here into this paint that's already there and let this pigment mingle in these areas and make a big dark fun dramatic sky with this and this turns these colors that are already down in here into a nice gray a, a strong hard gray and I want a strong gray around this edge right here because this is going to and be lighted up on this side and that'll cause a great deal of drama to happen in there and I'm going to let this come down out of this side across there and I'm going to let it run back once again a little bit of blue that's going to come in across this area I want my lines to move into the painting and lead towards the center of interest and then tip all that back and let it run wildly around and mix together. Now you'll be surprised at how, uh, how, how much the pigment does mingle and how soft these edges become. Right now these look like lines, but that's going to just migrate. The pigment's going to migrate across there and it's just going to be very, very soft in a minute. So what we want to do is is we want to put our pigments down and then let them alone. Let them alone. Now I'm going to come in here with a, a little more of my ultramarine blue and now I'm going to do some blue sky area. These are our cloud shapes but now I'm going to have a little bit of blue come in and I'm going to be judicious with that. I'm going to preserve these lights but this blue is going to come right down against this edge and then once again keeping with these shapes that we're doing we're going to let the clouds part a little bit over here and letting these little white areas come in and I'm going to bring this down again leaving these lights and this looks very dramatic right now but that by the time we uh, bring our um, darks into here this this will just settle back it won't be anywhere near this this dramatic at that point but let's just crawl some of these blues back into it and work away from this edge and come this direction we're making kind of a fan shape as they crawl up as we come down along the horizon I want some more purple shapes to to uh, to come out of these these clouds so I'm using a little bit of magenta down in here with my blue and coming off and see how this is just turned into kind of a dark glow up in there right now it's not near as strong as it was a couple of minutes ago good it's just the way we want it now mix a little blue in here and come down and make these intervals closer together as we approach the the horizon line make these intervals narrower now I'm going to come up here I've left some blue up in it or some some uh, blue sky up in that area but we've still got to bring some of it down and form the outside edge and I'm going to kind of rough that edge up a little bit and finish this down because I want that blue to come out the other side there touch this corner and then I'll soften that edge with some clear water because this area is dry now it's uh, becoming dry and then I'll just 
continue that blue down a little lighter as it reaches the horizon. Now that's a pretty dramatic sky. You're saying, wow, I don't know, that's a, that's a lot. But once we get the rest of the painting in here, you're going to see that that's going to push down a little bit. Two things happen here. The pigments migrate, and what did look like really strong blues, now that's turned into a very pleasant gray up in here, with orange showing through, red showing through, yellow showing through. Gives the feeling that it is the end of the day, or when we start to pick up that color on the underside of the clouds. And that's going to be much more dramatic than what we started with up here. Okay, now we're going to wait. We just sit on our hands and we wait. We never go back into these washes. We do it just this, put it down, let it happen, and live with it. Uh, if we sit there and start diddling with it now, we're going to get some oozles and cauliflowers and funny shapes up in there. Then you're going to want to take your towel and start dabbing at it and everything else. No need of that. You know, you can do a little bit of softening later, but don't keep messing with it right now or we'll lose all this beautiful soft quality that water get, watercolor gives us right off the bat. So let's sit and wait for a little while now. So as this begins to dry uh, in this area up in here, now let's go to work on these rocks. We're usually working from the distance to the foreground. So uh, just to kind of get us started, I'm going to mix out a little bit of blue over here once again. And, and I'm going to work on some of these very distant cliffs. I want them to be slightly grayer. So it looks like they're off in the distance. So I'll add a touch of cadmium red to that and thin this glaze down quite a bit. And now I'm going to work on these distant, distant uh, hoodoos back here or these shapes that stick up. I'm going to kind of simplify those a little bit and bring those down into it. I want to push them back so they're going to stay gray like this. So I'm just once again, I really don't have to stop at these edges, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then as we come across on these over here, as we work, I'm going to drop in a little more red. And let that pigment mingle. And then we'll assume that there's some mesas back here, but we won't, don't want to delineate every one of them. But we want to conclude this so the sky comes down against this. Uh, these distant cliffs, and I'm going to leave some blue right up here on these ones off in the distance that we see back in here, and then I'll just let those bleed into these lighter ones, or into these warmer ones right up here. So this fills further back, these are moving a little bit forward. And we don't want much to happen back there, so we'll let it go at that, and we'll move forward over here. Now, these cliffs are not going to be be gray. I'm going to bring some some really warm tones into this, uh, which is going to really reflect how these 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 uh, these rocks are are actually uh, made, which is much much uh, warmer, more like you can see in this one in the foreground. Well, they're all like that, but because of aerial perspective, these are great as they move back in the distance, and Remember, our photographs lie to us, so we want to move beyond that and get into these warm reds that we're going to see down in the sand and so forth. Even, let's just put a little bit of, this is quinacridone sienna, where the sun's going to hit down in, in some of this foreground area down in here, it's going to be this warm. So let's just put a little of that in right now as our starting point and say, yeah, well, we can get back into some darker reds because it is in the shadow. We, we don't want to make them too strong, but as we start to build in these colors up on these rocks, we're going to try to establish how warm do we want to go here and, deep, and in relationship to these ones back here. Now, I'm thinking... These should be warmer, but they're not the focal point. So I like these colors here. And remember, we're going to have, I better draw this in so that you can see. Right up here on this edge, 
I'm going to let the, the sunlight hit on this side of this, this, um, gossip lady over here. <laughs> and this sunlight's going to hit right up here on the top. And it's going to kind of crawl down this edge a little bit. So I'm going to preserve that. I'm going to do the same on this cliff right over in here. That's going to have a highlight area. So, and this one as well. I'm just going to kind of draw that in. So this part and a few places down on here is, is going to catch sunlight. This might catch a, a corner of it right there. Of course, if we, if we didn't have the, or if we hadn't been there, we wouldn't know how these, these light areas are going to be. And we want to separate these shapes. So with this down in here, we'll just let that alone for now. Maybe soften that edge so that we can come back into it and mess with it in a minute. But let's come up here and get our lightest lights that are going to be where the, the sunlight comes on these distant cliffs. I'm going to bring a, because the sunlight's going to be hitting strongly, this is a, a Naples yellow. It's a kind of an opaque yellow, uh, very warm, but uh, not bright like, say, a cadmium or aurelian or some of those colors. And I'll leave a little bit hitting right up here, but not too much. These are my lightest lights in there, and I'll just let those fade out because I'm going to come in here and I'm going to bring some color on the back side of these um, right now and get in these lightest lights and then get into some warmer oranges back up in here where that sunlight's hitting. We can be very loose at this point. We don't have to do too much detail. I did a little negative painting there just to be sure that those are uh, preserved and then come in here with some darker darks and I'll have to go much darker than this but I like to lay in my my light and middle values first and get things established and then work darker from there uh, we can always go darker but it's hard to um, pull things back <laughs> and retrieve a light area from a dark passage. So we know they're going to be dark on this side, so I can get this going over there right now and let a lot of this pigment just come down in here. And this is going to be quite a bit darker up in there, but I want some to build some texture in it right now as we go. Get some of these oranges and and reds where they're going to be. This will all be really dark green so we don't have to worry about these edges just now. And then let's come down and pick up put a little magenta into this one and come down and pick up these cliffs which will also have a little bit of light across the top but mostly move down into the the shadow area. This will be in shadow, this will be in shadow, the light will pop through the middle here according to our our plan. Just a little bit of light hitting across the top there that we'll preserve and a few little places down in here as well. Okay, so I'll shape the back side of that, bring a little bit of and blue over here to darken it. I want that shape to come off nicely against the against the sky. Here are a couple of places where the light is going to be, or whether where these little light areas are along those rocks. I'll, Oh, they won't be that light, but I'm going to preserve it anyway so that we've got them. A little bit of this perimeter shape as this rock comes out on this side and down across here, all in shadow. Each time I reach into my palette, I reach for darker colors, or not darker colors necessarily, but different, different colors. And I'll bring 
this mesa up here down to this area. That's going to be this part that leads right into it down in here. And then there will be some bushes across the top. And I'll leave a little bit of light there where these uh, bushes come way off in the distance, but probably end up darkening those up in a minute. Okay, so now we're just starting to get this laid in. And uh, I'm going to come down here and just give it a, give it a place to stop and leave a couple of places where we see some um, some lighter branches and bushes uh, up against this dark. Um, this is negative painting. We'll have we'll form some bushes and shapes down in here, uh, not probably that detailed, but just to show you how we pull the dark down and create those. Um, and then we'll. As long as we've got that going, we'll pick up some uh, yellow ochre and some some greens down in here, some sap green, and go ahead and start some of these bushes as we shape across here. This will give us a good start. Now we're testing our values. We're looking at it. We're saying what needs to be darker, what needs to be lighter, uh, where do I need to go with this, and and um, this is going to be a light passage through here, so. We won't, won't necessarily want it to be just warm, but we do want to preserve these lights as we come across the middle. So I'll get some light values into here. And not pure whites, but... And then down in here, let's get some sand shapes going on. A little bit of quinacridone coral a tiny bit of yellow ochre to give us some this pink sand in the foreground This will all be quite dark in a minute, but we can start that by moving along here. And um, I'll just, we're going to build a lot of texture down here, so i just make some color and get that going. So now we see our shapes starting to form. We're, we, we haven't got our darkest darks in yet because we haven't got some of these other shapes in. Our darkest darks are going to end up going in this area and along in here, kind of this shape and this shape in here are going to be our darkest areas. But let's finish off this cliff right here, this uh, sheep rock, and um, so we can get rid of this white and get rid of some of these other whites and get our, our color and our values laid in down along in here. So let's just quickly do that. Let me pick up sheep rock back here. Got some greens and bushes back in here, so let's just lay some in. Uh, most people are very surprised at how finished my paintings are when they're done, and then they see when I paint them how loose that I start. Well, I want to block in these, these areas, and then I can always refine the shapes. As long as I don't get my, my darks up here in the sky or somewhere I don't want to go, all this area in here where I dumped a bunch of color, that'll just form the basis of light that's going to hit up on the edges of, of these rocks up in here. So we'll get some darker darks in there and get this shaped up good and put some texture in here. But that all comes later. That doesn't come now. Now we want to get our, our values where they need to be and, and get this going. Now I'd like to see these rocks down here be gray, but uh, I want it to be a colorful gray. So I'm going to bring in uh, all three of my 
primary colors here to get my gray. And I'm just going to mix and match and move around and let these colors run together to make this gray that I'm, I'm going to want down here. Get some good blue out here on this side. And... Now we get some grays that are that are interesting because they're dark enough as we see up in here, but they have a variety, a variety of shapes. So let's go ahead and and get those laid in here and be kind of brave about it. But what fun we get but when we let this pigment mingle on the paper. And then I'll come in here and do a little splattering as well. Still got to go a little darker, but I want this color, this glow to show through. Now when I get up here, the bottom of this tree, I'm going to have some branches there, which will be done in negative painting. So I'll, I'll take a smaller, a smaller brush now. I'll get some dark darks right up underneath there. And I'm going to let some branches fall out away from this, this tree. And so I've got to be quite careful. I don't have to do this right now, but I'd like to see this blend up into it. So here's some branches that are just going to come down. I'll always at the bottom of these, especially these gnarly uh, junipers, you see a whole little um, drooping of small branches that just stick out, just almost white against the the landscape. And And we'll try to pull some of that in right now and just isolate a couple of areas. We can come and finish this off in a minute, but let's get some of this going down in here right now. These are just random shapes that are going to crisscross down here along the, along the bottom. We don't really care where they go. We can refine them, push them back, move them around later. Okay, now, as we nail that down, let me grab another brush here and finish off our, our wonderful little shadow area down in here. And while that's drawing, let me just pick up a little of that really dark, dark right in there. While this is drawing down, I'm going to grab my um, another of my brushes here and wet it with just clear water and now I'm going to come along here and slap this brush across it with clear water and it's going to create some sparkles down in here down in this area okay and as this starts to dry even more I'll, I'll do that once again and they'll be a little bit tinier so you kind of have to be careful that you don't splatter all over your sky or whatever, but usually you can confine it to an area down in here. So now I'm going to just build a little bit of texture into these rocks while it's still moist. And well, I don't care if I get oozles or these little cauliflower back runs and so forth down in here because I want there to be all kinds of texture down in here. I don't care if I get that kind of thing. I hope I do. Each time I touch this brush to it, I hope it creates some little places that would appear to be rocks and fissures in the rock and um, edges and so forth. And even a place or two where there's some, some lighter stuff. Okay, and then those will come down and merge with the sand down in here across the bottom. I'll clean this edge off with my towel. And build some rocks kind of out in this area. I'm going to go ahead and get the darks in on this uh, juniper tree right now on this edge so that we can evaluate 
how our colors are coming in terms of value. Evaluate. You know, we're going to decide on what those values are. And we need to establish the fact that things are lighter off in the distance according to the laws of aerial perspective. And the darks get darker as we move forward into the foreground. So we want to, we've overlapped these shapes nicely. We want overlapping of shapes uh, to work our way back in space. We want the viewer to be able to enter the painting and walk back through it and get through the painting. So we've got a, a good start, but we don't want to leave these whites here. That's going to confuse us. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some pigment here. I'm going to start with sap green and put that over in this well. I'm going to clear out a couple of others right here so that I can start fresh. And every once in a while just wipe those out. That's all you need to do. And then I'm going to bring some, um, looks like I'm kind of running out here. I need to fit, refill that well. This is quinacridone gold and it makes a, a nice um, kind of an earthy green when those are mixed together. And we also want to have some yellow ochre up in here and something that brings the, the red into it which would be quinacridone sienna over here. Our darks will come about through the use of thalo, thalo blue over here but that is much too strong of a color to use um, just by itself or even with this we'll dull that back by picking up some of these other things in here. So let's grab some of our lighter lights and let's start to get this foliage up in here. Again, reaching back into a different color every time we go back to our palette to add variety. And we know this is going to be quite dark, so we can bring some pretty dark darks into that even now. But, but they won't stay there. We know that that um, these um, values that we create right now, they don't have to be the, the darkest values. But we do want to let that pigment mingle and work its way around. So let's just get, get in here. We don't have to have all these edges because we're going to darken this up too in a minute. But we want to get rid of that. Get rid of all this really light light in here. And we want there to be a variety. We want to see some red in there. We want to see some some uh, this green green. We want to see some yellow because that's the way we see in bushes. And we'll just bring this up in here. I'm using a smaller brush. I don't need to at this point, but I'm a little bit worried about coming down at the bottom because once again I want to have some of these negative branches and negative shapes down in here. So uh, I'm, I'm saying, well, I, I got to have it a, a certain dark down in there to pull these off. Okay, now I'm going to have a branch come out of here. And here. And here. And I just kind of look at it as I go. And uh, no particular plan for it. Just let these uh, branches just kind of move around and work their way out of the background here and come up and connect with the foreground. Negative painting. Boy, these little lights, they won't stay white, but um, because I will alter that, that color, but we need to have this sparkle of branches down in here. You can see what it adds to it already. It really pulls that bush forward which is what we want. So let's just go ahead while we when we're connecting these shapes and bring the greens down and just look for a spot to start a maybe a little bit bigger branch that these could hang off of. It, this is the one of the most requested of all my techniques is 
is how do you do negative painting? Well, you just paint the darks to reveal the lights. It's, it's, there's no magic to it. It's what we see in nature. Our eye always goes to the, the uh, lightest lights against the darkest darks as we, as, as our eye glances through the landscape. It finds those shapes. So it's not a big deal. All right, now I'm going to get these darks in here. Let's get some greens back in this side. And they might go a lot darker than this by the time we're done. But this pushes. We had to get these right in here because we've got to preserve them. But let's get these these greens in a, in a place where we can really uh, establish our, our darks and our lights and say, yeah, this is what we want or this is what we don't want. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. Now I'm going to come over here. This is a good time to look at this and see. Look at all the color that's in there. It's so vibrant and lively if we allow the pigment to do the blending. Now I'm going to come in here and darken up these distant bushes. And I'm going to bring a little blue into that. By using because I want to get the sage effect of some of these uh, blues as they come across. But I want to leave the highlights. So we're all in shadow down in here, so all this becomes a darker value. But again, I'm grabbing a little bit of um, th uh, cerulean blue, and I'm mixing that with a little bit of ultramarine. That will give us the feeling of the bottom of these these bushes as they come down through here. I'll let the darks settle at the bottom a little bit. Sometimes what I like to do is tip it up and let the bead run back. Watch that grow. Watch those shapes grow back into it in the way that um, things do naturally. Okay, I'm going to keep this going now. I'm going to move back here and pick up some of these shapes along in here and continue this one out to about there crawling along the edges of these rocks good stuff okay and then I'll be cautious as I move over in here because I want the I want the darks to be along the bottom, but I want these lights across the top to really stand out. So I got to be a little bit careful how I do these these bushes and allow for some of these rocks to to form this pool down in here. So I connect these shapes. What we're seeing in our our pattern here, we're seeing these, this big dark shape here. And then um, letting that, letting these connect. We want to have our, our light and dark shapes connect wherever we can. Okay. And now move into some darker darks back here. And I'll let some highlights show through up on the top of this bush. So. We'll do that with this dark that we're putting in behind. Let's just soften these top edges by using a little clear water, touching them outside of this wet pigment and letting the pigment crawl up into it. We're not pulling the wet um, paint up we're touching the clear water away from it and then we allow that to touch then the pigment draws itself up into it uh, just by the nature of the pigment so that creates a soft edge along the top if we just grab this and pull it it just continues to enlarge the shape so we want to just put our water out here and then crawl down and touch that edge and then it just softens the edge a little bit Okay, now let's start to evaluate. Let's get this taken care of down here in terms of uh, we want some of these kinds of 
of rocks and sand and so forth to be across there as well. I need to, to resolve this light light here. It needs to be light, but not that light. And then we'll come into these middle values and start working those out. So we've got a good start right now. And um, I'm going to clean out my palette. And let's take a little break and then come back and start in again. So as we begin working on this area up here, on these three gossips, I'm going to use a, a warm, um, kind of an orange, and I'm going to bring that back here on the shadow side. This side will probably be darker than that, but I don't want it to be much cooler. I want to control these, uh, these places where the light is hitting just on part of the surface and not on the others. So I'm going to be careful as I approach this. I've kind of made a few little guidelines down here that'll help me that you can see that I've drawn over the top. And now I'll just start to move this back into this range. And if we can see if we can start to see the sunlight hitting on that, we'll keep this part of them pretty warm at this point, and we can cool them down later. Okay, now always on the side facing the sun, the sunlight, we want to soften those edges out here on this side. Not this side, but this side. And that'll help us to feel like it, that they turn a little bit rather than just having a hard, hard, hard edge. So we soften these on the outside part. And now we start to feel the rock move around slightly and move around that shape. So now we're going to get down into the shadow area over here and that's going to all be darker. So we'll get darker but probably once again not as dark as it's going to go. I'm going to preserve a place where these little branches are going to come across and get down into here. and gauge carefully as I go now. I don't want to get too dark, and I don't want to get ahead of myself for the distance it's at, but I want to create that sunlight back in there. So, just do this carefully. And then come down into here. Now across this part right here, uh, I won't make it too warm. We're going to see some grays back in there. That particular rock back there, it'll be in shadow, but it, I don't know, there's a lot of, a lot of gray in that. So I'm going to leave these lines going across there. And now we have a more interesting shape happening up in here. And you can see how important it is to have this blue come down against that and pick, and pick up this light here, that contrast gives some power here. Well, it draws attention up to that. Notice how these are not drawing much attention, but this is because it has light against dark. We'll have a little bit of light up along in here as well, so it bounces across to all three. But the rest of this will all be in shadow, so that's where our interest will be. I'm going to bring this distant cliff that's just behind it right over here now, and See how dark that needs to be. And I'd like to see it darker than that. So I'll mix up something just a little bit darker, but not too dark. It needs to be warm, but not too warm. And it needs to have some blue in it because it's behind these other clips. I want to push it back. I don't want it to be our center of interest. So now I have some, some good strong reds. This has some blue in it. And I'm going to have to bring this along in here and shape with my, um, using the negative painting technique, shape around some of these uh, branches. 
So now I take a smaller brush and I just start working around that. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm using dark to shape the light. Okay, I like that dark. It may still need to be darker, I don't know, but I like it for now. And I'll just quickly come in here and lay in these branches as I go. these branches pop out. So we can see them against this dark background now and we can see why we put that there. Okay, We don't want these to be more powerful than that so we're going to go these back in a minute. But right now we need those darks back in there. And I think it needs to be this dark. So now as I look at that I think that well maybe this needs to be darker. Great, that's, that's how this works. That's the, the pattern that we take on this as we work our way across. We check out the, the lights that we put down versus the darks and say, hmm, where do I need to go to make this better, stronger, whatever. Okay. So this is coming along nicely. I'll darken up a few places along in here, and I think I'm going to darken up a lot of this. But I'm going to keep this warm as it comes down, but darker. Along this roof that has these shapes. It's kind of a horizontal feel to it, almost distant cliffs. Once again, I'll bring some blue so it's not too intense down in there. And now we can feel these shapes coming across there. And once again down into here, I'll drop that right down against this edge. This part down in the middle. Bring this dark down in there too. This is this branch that's going to come up and join this one right there. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll find some darks now right down in here in this area and That'll I'll establish the, the light, the dark, and the light of the dark, and then I'll move up and I'll work on these right up here using these same lights and darks, and then darken up these clips. So this is a test, right, in this area, trying to determine which is my best approach here. So now, a few more darks down in here. And here we go. Darken these clips up slightly and evaluate. pulling these cliffs forward and that's good. So I'll, I think I'll continue to darken these right in here, bring those forward.
these clips will come all the way down. Meet this hillside right down here. And when we get to this point, once I darken this up, then I think we've got a pretty good, uh, a pretty good idea where we're headed, and then we can, we can move quickly through the rest of this. a little bit of negative painting up in here as we cross over some of these bushes. Maybe let one of these sticks go up quite a bit higher. Right down in here. So we can add some verticals to that shape and then bring this one down right behind there. And Yes, I like how these values are working on getting darker and darker as we come forward. And uh, so I've got to finish that up in there. And let's take this, this uh, sheep rock back here, <coughs> as it's called. And I'm going to make it in full, um, full silhouette back there. But I'm going to make the whole thing darker as it sticks up. This whole thing will be in shadow. And it's further back than this is in the shadow. So I want to darken it up, have it just be the shape that comes up like this. But this, we don't want this as dark as that because it's further back. So let's just get that in. The shape of that against the against these bushes. Finish this off, and then we get our, our values adjusted. So these really feel like they're off in the distance. This feels like it's closer. This feels like it's really close. By the time we get our darks in here, it'll feel like these are even closer yet. But we're starting to pick up this value arrangement that we're seeing up in here where these shapes connect and our darks come through here and our lights will bounce across that middle. I think it'll work out pretty well. Let's go to work up here a little bit on these uh, gossips. Once again, keeping it quite warm. Trying to keep the generally the shape that we that we see if we were there it doesn't have to be exact. It never does, but we certainly want it to look like what we're saying that it is. If I call these the the uh, three gossips, they ought to look like the three gossips. So I'm kind of being cautious with that. Time. That same orange earthy tone. And then I'll quickly come in here now and soften a few of these edges where it turns so they're a little softer, like this is right there, right there, right there. Out here on these, right there, right there. Not quite so harsh.
Okay, so these are the middle values on these uh, maze, these uh, hoodoos sticking up here. And we're going to put a, another darker dark kind of up against those. But we really want the light to hit it. So we've got to be careful where we put this. But it's got to be there. Okay, now this will come out and meet the sky there. You might be saying, well, how does he know where the light's going to go if it's not there in the photograph? Well, number one, I was there. And number two, I'm just following the laws of nature and, uh, and working with the shapes that are there. And and also working with just where do I need those darks to be? <laughs> And I still want this all in shadow down there. And I think this is where we'll stop and let it dry for a minute. Take a quick break, because I need one. And you probably do too. If you've been if you've stuck with it this long, well my hat's off to you. The old adage, uh, it's more fun than watching paint dry. Well, here we are, we're watching the paint dry. And you know, if you stuck with me this long, it's uh, you're just good people. <laughs> okay, so I'll come back in and we'll bring the darks in on these areas later. But right now, let's just stop at that. We've got the lights of this helping us to fill like this mace is in front of that and it's darker than there. So now we've got these other ones coming up. This looks like it's coming together nicely and it's going to be kind of fun. So now we'll move from here after we get this done and start to uh, shape some of these other things down in this area here. Notice how these really stick out right now. Well, they won't by the time we're done. We'll suppress those as well. Uh, and we'll hold our interest to this area right here and have this circle around and come down across this foreground. And uh, our painting is going to be a lot more interesting than that reference photo is right there because we planned it that way. So let's take a break now. We'll get you a drink of water and uh, have a rest and maybe get a sandwich and come back and we'll... We'll keep marching on on this painting. Okay, now we're ready to continue on with this painting. Um, we've got uh, we've got it all to this certain point. Now it's a matter of kind of moving along just a little bit from one step to the next. And this is the part that's a little more ponderous because we're going to start to bring certain areas into focus and control the lights a little bit better and finish up down in here in some foliage and rocks. And that takes a little time, but I have a hunch that you're interested in that part of it as well. So we're going to forge ahead and I'll just explain to you um, as I go. So I'm going to just kind of plow along in here, bring in some darks where I need it. And stop at the edge of these bushes. And... I'm going to bring this all the way up, I think, right into this area here. As we feel these shadows, these long shadows come across here, and work their way down there. Now I'll bring some darks down in here along the bottom of the shrubbery down in this area. want to uh, go ahead and bring some of these shadows across the, the foreground and darken up this area to focus our eye into this middle. Again, this is all a little too light up in here, so we're going to be very bold. As we darken up this foreground, 
once again using a variety of color. We've got this nice base in here, but it's not quite dark enough. That shadow would come down there and come across this area and leave a few little places where it breaks away from these bushes and gets a little bit soft. The shadows are hard up here, but they're soft as they move out away from it. And this kind of forms a base and brings this, this dark up here that we, we like to see. And then um, I think we need to get it a little bit darker up in here. I'm hesitant to go too dark just yet, but I know it's going to be at least that dark, so I'll bring that in. Touch a few other colors into this. And then let that all blend and scumble out into this area out here. Yep, okay. So I like those darks. They help and it focuses our attention further back into here. Let's grab some darks for our, our sage. Turn it into a gray by adding some of this orange to it. And then let's get some of this along the bottom of the sage and keep it fairly dark tones. all these little branches back while I'm in here with this bluish green darken those up so they start to fall back we'll still see these but I'll, I'm going to start to give them a tone that pushes them back in there a little bit I'll leave some sticking out and push some back in again so down in the shadow area so they've got to have a they want to be lighter, but they've got to be pushed back. So that's what I'm doing right now. There. Now all this falls into the foreground as if shadows falling across it, except in here, 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 and across the middle part. Now let me take a jump here. Get up into this. This part actually sticks out quite a little bit. So we'd have a little stronger shadow along this front area. This would darken up back in here. And let's just keep refining these edges. This is kind of like a fin that sticks out here. So we're going to go ahead and shape that where that light's hitting. It comes clear down to this area. Okay, so the sunlight's hitting along this little per perimeter right there, and it's hitting strongly across these others. Now we have kind of a cast shadow. So the cast sh shadow is going to fall across over this area, and, and also back in here as well. And Bring a little more magenta into this, and not quite that dark, but dark, because it's a cast shadow from this cliff falling across the front of this one. And since it's a cast shadow, it is going to be darker than what's around it, and on the it's going to be also darker than the. Um, 
form shadow side of this over here. Well, this is a cast shadow as well, so we'll bring that in from this. And a little bit of light hitting there, and then this is cast shadow into this area. And back into form shadow on this side. So we'll keep that warm. Anytime you have these cast shadows, it starts to, to um, help the viewer see what the terrain looks like. I'm going to mix up kind of a purple here. And I think I'll, I'll leave all this just the way it is for now. Light hitting, 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 bouncing across. Um, seems like we'd have some down in here as well and that would really help shape this a little and down to this point has kind of a long uh, crease that comes across the bottom there and then a couple of these back into our cast shadows which would be from over here hitting on this right to this point. So as we uh, take a look at this now, we're getting to a really uh, more of a finished state uh, at this point. And I'm just looking around from side to side, wondering if it needs something in, in one place or another, and trying to evaluate what we need to finish this project off. Let's put this mat on here now and look it over. I like to stand back just a little bit and and what the mat does, uh, yeah, I keep these trial mats handy that I can put on at any time. Uh, and sometimes I put them on before this, as you know. But now I'm looking at it and saying, how finished does it look? Uh, sometimes what I need to do is just actually put this mat on here and uh, set the painting aside for a while. And just come back to it later with a fresh eye and say, you know, what do I need up in this area, or, or you know, is my light working across through here? Uh, do I need to just dull back some of these negative parts, uh, the negative painting that is there, and push it back a little bit, or just some of the little detail things down here in the foreground that, that might need some attention. So, at this point, I'm looking at it in that way, but I think sometimes we can do better if we get this finished and then set it aside, come back to it later and, and take a look at it with a fresh eye and uh, take it from there. So, thanks for uh, joining me for this painting. I've enjoyed having you here. Uh, come back and visit me again and uh, let's take a try at another painting later on. I'm Roland Lee. Thanks for joining me.